Hi, we're being asked to look at a function, x squared plus 11x minus x to the fifth. And we're being asked to find, with a graphing calculator, the three zeros of the function, the relative maximum of the function, and the relative minimum of the function. And there are certain steps we need to go to to do that. So, let's find the zeros first. The zeros are the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts. In other words, the zeros are the x equals whatever this number is, x equals whatever this number is, and x equals whatever this number is. Let's find this zero first. Okay, I want to get closer. There. All right, here's our function, and I've already put it into y equals, as you can see. Let's graph it. And that's what it looks like in living color. All right, I've changed the window to make this more visible. The window I'm using is x min equals negative 3, x max equals positive 3 with a scale of 1, y min equals negative 10, y max equals 13, and with a y scale and an x res of 1. Okay, let's go back to graph. Now, what I want to find is this leftmost 0. To do that, I'm going to push the second button and the trace button. That will give me this menu, and number two is zero. I'm looking for a zero, so I will choose number two. Now we have to find out exactly what the zero is. That's not it. If it were, well, y would be zero because um, for zeros, we have an x number and then we have y equals zero, which is why they're called zero. All right, the way we do this is we trap the zero. We trap this point right here between what's called a left bound and a right bound. All right, so I'm going to move my cursor so that it is to the left of this x-coordinate right there. And you can see that this x-coordinate is going to be to the left of this x-coordinate. I'm going to hit Enter. This is the left bound. Now you see I have a, li a light little uh, vertical line there to represent the left bound. And now it says right bound, question mark, which means I have to move to the right of that first zero that I'm looking for. I'm going to hit enter. Now look closely. This is the first zero we're looking for. It's trapped now between this line on the left, which is called the left bound, and this line on the right, which is called the right bound. Now, all I have to do is guess. And what guess means in the calculator's language is move the cursor so that I'm as close as possible to being right on top of the left zero of that first zero I'm looking for, and it looks like that's about as close as I can get, so I will hit enter. Now, look at that. Y is zero, 
x is negative 1.74428 and we are supposed to round to let's see use commas as needed round to the nearest thousandth that's the third decimal place so um for my answer, the zero of the function is because there's only one. Well, no, there isn't. There are three. The first zero of the function is negative 1.744. And you can write this down because the problem you'll have on your, your uh, my math lab is a little different than this. You know, there'll be slightly different numbers. But for me, I would write down negative 1.744. Then I would write a comma because I'm going to find the next zero, which is probably x equals zero. But you can never be sure, so we have to find it. So I'm going to move the right cursor. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to go second. I'm going to click on, I'm going to push second, second, trace. And I'm going to hit two again. And now, even though I'm to the left of that point, I don't want to completely uh, confuse the calculator. So I'm going to move the cursor a little closer to the second zero I'm looking for. That looks to me like a very good left bound because the second zero is here and I need a left bound so that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to hit enter. Now I need a right bound so I move over to the right of the second zero. Move the cursor over to the right. That looks pretty good. I hit enter and now the second zero is trapped between this line and this line. All I have to do now that it's trapped is hit guess. I move my, uh, I'm going to push the left arrow key and move the cursor as close to being on top of that point as I can and I'm going to hit enter. And yes, indeed, the second zero is zero. X equals zero. So the first zero was 1.744. Then I would write a comma, and then I would write zero for X equals zero. That would be my second zero, and then comma. And now I'm going to go find the third zero. So I'll push second, trace, and two again for zero. I'm going to move over closer to the point I'm looking for, which is this point right here. Yes, my cursor is on the left of it. Yeah, the cursor can only travel along the path, but on this path, it is to the left of the third zero. So I hit enter, and I get my vertical line. Now I'm going to move the cursor to the right of that third zero. And I'm going to hit enter. Anywhere to the right is okay. The important thing is that your zero is trapped between these two vertical lines. Now, once it's trapped, I have to jump on it, kind of like a trapped animal. All right, I get as close as I can. Maybe I want to tranquilize something I've just caught. That's about as close as my cursor will get to the zero. I hit enter, and there I am. My third zero is 
Uh, but this 9 is going to round the 4 up to a 5. So now I know what my three zeros are. Negative 1.744, comma, 0, comma, 1.895. And we have found the three zeros of this particular function. Now we're going to find the relative minimum, this point down here, the very lowest point. When we find the relative minimum, we're actually finding the y coordinate now. When you find the zeros, you find the x coordinates of the points. When you find the relative minimum or relative maximum, you find the y coordinates of the points. So let's get to work. Push second, trace. Minimum is number three. So I push three. Now I need to move the cursor so that it's to the left of this point right here. It can only travel along the curve. You don't want it to leave the road. There, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll put it a little closer. Now I hit Enter. Now to find my right bound, I move the cursor over to the right of what I can see is the minimum point. All right, now my relative minimum is trapped between the left bound and the right bound. I'm going to move the cursor as close as I can to being on top of the relative minimum. There we go. I'll hit enter. That point is my relative minimum point and the value of the relative minimum, which is what we're being asked for. Well, I, I should have gotten the maximum first, but I'm, I'm finding the minimum. What is the value of the relative minimum of the function? The value of the relative minimum is the y coordinate. Negative 9.316 is what you would write down. And that is the value of your relative minimum. Now, let's go back up one and find the value of the relative maximum, which is this point right here. Second, trace. Maximum is number four, so I'm going to push four. Now, I need a left bound for this point I am going to move the cursor closer. I just want to avoid um, confusing the calculator because it's just a machine. I'm going to hit enter. Now I need a right bound for this point right here, which means I need to move the cursor over here somewhere. There. Enter. Now I'm going to guess. It's pretty close. Enter. The value of the relative maximum point is 12.28. It would be 2, except that 6 will round that 2 up to 3. So our answer will be 12.28. Two, eight, three. Now all that's left is to find the range. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to change the window so that we have more room above and below. So I'm going to let my Y min be negative 20. 
and my y max be positive 20, and I'm going to hit enter. If I had changed my scale, um, I wouldn't have so many little hatch marks right there. All right, this, this, even though 12 something is our relative, is the value of our relative maximum, and what was it, negative nine point something was the value of our relative minimum. The fact is that this graph will continue going up forever and it will continue going down forever. So our range is going to be negative infinity way down here to positive infinity way up here. And that is how you do this kind of problem. Talk to you later.